So do you want to preface this or anything? Yes, I want to preface this with first off of like, yes, I don't think anyone liked this video. I don't think I, well, okay, there's like one guy in the comment section I saw like, oh yes, we, you get it correctly. But the first thing I wanted to say with this video is that the few videos that this channel has put out, the one thing about them is that they're extremely well edited and put together. I just wish that they put more thought into what they said in those videos. Oh, so like the opposite of us? Yes. Well, you, you'll see in a bit. Like they're actually well edited and well, like reasonably well scripted. It's just that like there's not doesn't seem to be all much thought into it. And I, I also want to say, even though I don't think anyone's gonna walk and watch this video because it's gonna be fucking long, and this is already long. Yeah. But we don't mean to personally attack this channel. It's just we're just, we're just gonna be. It's the video. But no, I don't really. They made know, a bad video. I don't really and we're gonna talk about the video. Responding to. At no, the I, moment? No, yeah. Um, but I I think it's actually a very important distinction to make that you can criticize someone's ideas without criticizing them. Yeah, exactly. I think that's an important distinction that needs to be made. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, so, the, the, the full the full disclosure for the context of this video is before Devil May Cry 5 came out, they made a video called... I'm trying to remember the top of my head. Shit, I've seen that. Why Devil May Cry 5? I think it's already sucks. Yes. And it's, it's only about 10 to 15 minutes long, no more longer than that. I think it might only be five. It's a bad video... It, 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 like, I remember what it was. There, like he's basically assuming that Zuno didn't want to make this game, or no, Zuno wanted to make uh, DMC two. Yeah, I remember. And then instantly set makes, and that makes Devil May Cry five going to be bad, even though, and I, it, it cursed me for saying this. There are good things in DMC that can be taken out of DMC. Um, I think the story in DMC is its weak point. Oh, it's awful. And the gameplay in DMC is also its weak point. It's, but it's weak point and it's strong point. It's weird to the gameplay in DMC Definitive Edition. Mm -hmm. Totally fine. It's very if for a, for a Devil May Cry game, it's not enough depth, but the the system that they added in of which you could um, you could carry any combo from any weapon to into any other weapon. It's really fucking cool. Yeah. Cuz you can do two quick hits with the normal sword into the super heavy attack from the from the hammer cuz every every weapon had the same kind of combo that functioned entirely differently for that weapon and they were all seamlessly integrated into one another. That and turbo mode. And turbo mode, yes. Making the game play faster. Um, also the definitive edition ran on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Oh, that's going to be loud. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> they ran on the X, uh, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 at 60 frames. The Xbox 360 version of DMC at its original release ran at 30. I know. I, I, if I, and um, did it have a PC release on launch? This is, this is already a tangent. No I feel idea. Like, I don't know. I don't think it even came out with, at 30 frames. In, in, to, to, I mean, at 60 frames on PC in the beginning. If there was a PC release. I not. I didn't really give a shit I about PC, a PC until like about a month in that time ago. So that. like, yeah, yeah. I, got, I don't know. But either way, basically the context of this video is they made one bad video, which was a very bad hot take that no one liked. And so they decided to make a four times longer bad hot take. And as a as a purveyor as an auteur of hot takes, I'm glad that I can be along here for the ride. Yes, because we're, we're we are both big fans of Devil May Cry. You longer than me because I actually did not know the uh, that Devil May Cry existed before E3. When would they announce Devil May Cry Five? Oh yeah, I didn't and know. I, I didn't give a hyped. shit. And then I was watching the, watching the trailer with you, and you were like, "Oh, it's Nero." No and chit chatter then, monologue. Like, and, then, ah! and then you just fucking talked for like a, a, probably a few hours and days about Devil May Cry. I was like, okay, I bought I, I bought the <laughs> Devil May Cry uh, like collector's edition. I played them all, and even now two. Here we are. I played through two. It, if you have to. Okay. The funny thing is, I only played through half of two, and I think most people don't even realize they only played through half of two. Oh, because of the two. because there's an entire other campaign with. No, um, no, oh no! What's her name? This is gonna. This is Lucina, gonna be important. Lucia, Lucia. Lucia. Uh, Lucia. Lucina. Yeah. Fuck. Not, it's it, it's something like that. <laughs> Fuck. I forget her I, name. Uh, not that not that it really matters. Don't too worry. Much. I have. It's only it's only important. It, it's five. only important in the prequel novel for Devil May Cry I have, Five. Yeah, I've I've forgotten more about Devil May Cry than most people will ever know. <laughs> well, your expertise will maybe come in handy here if you remember something. Don't call it that. We should probably start this video. Don't call it that. Remember during our last uh, our last batch of episodes, you were like. For the DMC modded shit, what? I was like, you were like, yeah, well, in the Devil May Cry three manga, and I was like, what? Yeah, there's Devil May Cry manga, <laughs> which I don't, I, I never read it. I but said like, manga. As far as one. I know, it's never been finished, which is also the which is the, all, the other worst part. I'm sorry, I thought I should get points for saying the word manga. No, you should, you should get you should get points. Thank you. Which also then leads into you know V's XE costume that you get for pre-ordering, which is green. Yes. 
that's a reference to that that prequel ma- uh, manga where Virgil's outfit is green or something. I've not, I haven't read it, so that's I can't confirm. The uh, like um cover pages, cool. All right, so I've been told that this video is fucking rank. Uh, I got about a minute in, and like there was like it, it's like a it's like a fucking hot like hot take wrong information like boo 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 in the beginning, and it's fun. Are you ready? Let's go. I oh, fucking hit me. I have a safety beer. Ah! Like, actually, this is a hard cider. It's like chai. Oh, it's on me now. How did you do that? Our, I don't know. Fuck you. Our dear friend James brought many beers to my house. I love how it starts oh, in God, mon- it's awful. I, it starts in monochrome of Devil May Cry three of just like oh, the last the time days. Devil May Cry was good. It was all downhill since four. I have gripes with four. It was it's not a perfect game, but there's a lot in it that I like. Yeah, it's fine. And I and I guess oh, other, other other full disclosure. Oh, they actually do have some four in here. Other full disclosure. Um oh, I already forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, I I, I think I I think um, if I was pressed to say what what's the best Devil May what the hell's with your internet? Um Devil May Cry 3 I think is still gonna be the best Devil May Cry game ever made. Five is extremely close, but I think I think I like five more. I I think three, in terms of a full package, is a bit better in terms of put together, in terms of pacing and story. Five. The fact that once you beat it, it's like, hey, you want to do it as Virgil? You're like, oh yeah. (laughs) That's that's technically a special edition. Oh, here we go. Yeah, the fan sequences were the best. Up your butt. All right, let's do this. I already, I already. Okay, I'm already pausing. So I, lo- I if you want, I already want to point out how they cut away from the, from from the joke finishing. The joke isn't her saying up your butt. Yeah. The joke is Nero. The joke is Nero. rolling his eyes and being, oh god, <laughs> I have to work with you. Yes, the uh, generally a uh, the way a joke in a two man system works is you've got your crazy man, you got your straight man. And, you know, the crazy man can say whatever they want. Mm. The joke is your straight man's reaction. That's a cornerstone of comedy. Yeah. You can't just cut one out. To be fair, like, humor is subjective and he cannot like it all he wants, but to be like but I, I to be fair and like I guess I can't quote the people that Well, he it. just well, I what he did s- there was he showed half a joke. I want to s- say like, objectively not the whole joke. <laughs> this is true. But okay. There's already a lot of padding in this video. There's a lot of, there's some dead air. How far are we in? (laughs) Oh, bad words. Yay. Devil May Cry 5 is one of the most disappointing AAA releases I've ever played. Okay, well, he was disappointed. What were you, how were you? My expectations were exceeded. Isuno-san. Isuno-san. I would say I agree. Although I don't exactly say I had too many, well, I guess I had high expectations. Did you play Halo 5? Huh? Did you play Halo 5? (laughs) Oh, no. Did he? What? Did he play? Did he play DMC? Devil May Cry. I, mean, I guess it is. No, it's AAA. Like I mean, it, it that was, was that was Capcom. that was the official reboot. Capcom money it shoved so much shit into that game to make it. Oh, this beer's awful. It's like chai hard cider. Oh, I don't even want. To I don't even want to talk about this video. I'm, we're one minute and forty two seconds in, and I'm already talking about my beer. Yeah, don't. Let's not go there. Um. What was I saying? Well, I mean, okay, if you want oh, to unpack this like, statement I was going to say, because, like, obviously I haven't watched this whole video. I just want to say, because one, one of his biggest arguments in the, in the first video was about how DMC is a terrible, awful game. And it, and that, how the terrible awfulness of it is going to infect Devil May Cry 5, and that's why it's bad. And now, but he's saying Devil May Cry, now he's saying Devil May Cry 5 is more disappointing than DMC, unless maybe his expectations weren't as high for DMC because it's a remake, which I guess would be fair well, to okay. say. now... But this is all just, it's all, all, all it's here nor there and right who cares. Yeah, it's, it, all I have to go on right now is the statement that he said that this is the most dis- disappointing AAA game he's ever played. And for like, like, for him, itself, sure, it can be. It's ridiculous. For, for him, maybe, okay. He, he's a weird dude. It's short, its level design is simple. It's short? Its difficulty is easy. Its platforming is basic, its story is appalling. You know we have multiple embarrassing and one-dimensional. Settings. And smashed in the middle of it all. It's one of the most hands down, ridiculously imaginative and entertaining fighting systems I've ever played. Okay. 
So let's break that down. So literally everything in the game is awful except for the combat system. The game is the combat system. Well, yes. Everything but, else is icing on the cake. Yes, but I'm saying, is everything else awful? Well, let's, no. Okay. <laughs> First thing. So what do you start out with on that on that list of awful things? Is one of the most disappointing AAA releases I've ever played. Its playtime is short. Is it short? How, like, this was... Would, no, playtime is not short. I was going to say, in terms uh, of... Playtime is short if you're playing it on an easy difficulty and you get through it quickly. Yeah, but I, I'm, how long did it... I'm trying to remember... It, it felt like I... I don't really time when I play games. I don't really have, like, a concept of it. I want to say it, it took me about the same time to beat Devil May Cry 5 as it did Devil May Cry 3. I think 3 was only a little uh, bit longer. Devil May Cry 5 took me two play sessions. One evening and then a day off. Yeah, which... And for you, that's basically the day. A pretty depends. long period of time. Huh? Like, if I dev if I devote a day off to a game that I intensely love, like a Devil May Cry game, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll play for, like, six hours. Yeah. And I guess I guess you could say it's on the shorter side, but it's really not all that short in terms of the experience that it offers you, as well as the replay value. Ah. Yes. I mean, Devil May Cry in is... But I, I guess, to be fair to him, that would probably be something I would cite if, if, if some, a gun to my head issues with Devil May Cry 5. Is it a bit short? Uh, maybe. The first playthrough is... A bit short, yeah. but that's because the game locks you out of the harbor difficulties until you prove you're a cool guy. All right, before we get to that one, what's the next Level one? Level design is simple. Level design is simple. Okay. I can agree with that statement with a few caveats, though. I was, I'm, I'm going to add on to that, which I think this, this will come back later in, later in, so I'll say I'll talk about it quickly. The biggest issue with Devil May Cry 5 is that the story takes precedent over not gameplay, but, it, but areas and what you do in the game. They definitely wanted to tell us a very specific story in a very specific set of locations, and that so that show, seemed to seemed to have shoehorned them in to making some levels a bunch of the same. Yes, I will say that environment design and visual fidelity are fucking through the roof here, though. Yes. Um, Although in terms of visual it's like design, there are that's... too many missions in the Clyphod. Yeah, but the Cly or Clypoth. Either pronunciation is generally correct, but the Clypod is fucking gorgeous. Yes, particularly particularly the last part with um, Dante, where it's completely different. It's yeah. pretty cool when you're up in the sky. Um, but in terms of like level design, mm -hmm. um, it's not as varied or labyrinthine as like three, th four even. Yeah, um, three, three and four have you backtrack a lot but in, in terms of say, trying to figure out where to go. Devil May Cry Five is very much more linear in terms of story. Per, in, ter, in terms of um, just, it seems very more story oriented in terms of going in a straight direction, going to a compass sort of thing instead of route, different routing routes. Yeah, I will say that one of my bigger problems with Devil May Cry Four is that once you get to repeat playthroughs, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I have to do this. I have to remember which way to run in the. Uh, yeah. In the fucking forest as Dante, you're like, I'll oh, kill me. Yeah, well, you're like, okay. I mean, I, you you drop the the lost forest from Ocarina of Time like in the middle just to pad your game length. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's fine. It's still like a basic puzzle. It's a bit of an a bit of an old video game trope mm -hmm. to have all of your objectives based on puzzles or finding keys. Yeah. That that's, it, that's very old. Doesn't yeah. do yet. But I think we're kind of in the middle of games gameplay between like puzzle oriented gameplay. And what can we do that's still interesting other than, like, go here and do the thing? Because mm -hmm. it, definitely, um, it definitely it seems like Devil May Cry 5 took the route of, like, we're, 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 we're like, a one-person fighting game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we're I'm not going to gonna really wor worry about puzzles too much. I don't really mind this. Yeah. Um, I will also say, though, however, yeah. during gameplay elements, um, this game has one of my more favorite actual gameplay elements mm -hmm. in terms of level design, uh, where you would get onto those little arenas that are kind of dangling. Mm -hmm. And you have to, like, stay in the air and defeat the enemy quickly or more stylishly, or else the thing will fall and you can't jump up and get an item. Oh, yeah, I got you. I mean, yeah. Which is, like, genuine gameplay innovation, mm -hmm. and it's not... Hey, like move around, or else the thing will grab you, and it'll get teleport you down to oh, the basement where you have to kill a bunch of dudes. God, which is a staple of Devil May Cry. Like that's a genuine that's innovation. staple of Devil May Cry Four. God, yeah, this Cry game does not have annoying. too much innovation, but the innovation that it does have, I greatly appreciate. Yeah, it, Devil May Cry Five is probably the best word is the best summarization of it is a refinement of the series, and and like um, in a lot of ways, it doesn't add too much, but it refines almost every element into. 
It streamlines the level design, yeah. but in a way that I don't find egregious. Yeah, I think that's probably the best way Because it's not like an RPG, where the, the best thing about an RPG is its complexity and its obtuseness. Yeah, okay, another way. Yeah, another like way. What I played, the best thing about Devil May Cry 3 wasn't the obtuseness of, the, of its puzzles. It was, look at me, I'm in the air shooting a guy and then stabbing him into the ground, followed by a stinger into another man. Yeah. <laughs> Which this game has in fucking spades. Oh, God. All right, next point. Its difficulty is easy. That is subjective, I, at least for me. Well, what did he play his first time on? Well, well, well you, ha you have to play the first time on it. The highest you can do is, I think, um, Devil Hunter. Well, what if he did it on human? Well, he could, he could have done it on human, which the game is extreme. In terms if of you play the game... In terms of overall difficulty, it is easier than Devil May Cry 3. But as you get up to higher difficulty, it does get as high. But it's I don't think it ever reaches the same difficulty as Devil May Cry 3. But like I don't really see that as an inherent No, negative. Devil May Cry 3 is fucking punishing. Yes. Uh, I because you played Dante's Awakening, you didn't play Devil May Cry three. Yeah, exactly. You played the uh, re-release for the West that has an easier mode that is standard. Yep. Because this game was just too fucking hard. Yep. It like uh, there's it, also the whole gold orb system, which you can revive anywhere or or spend red orbs. But like, yeah, that's that, Capcom. that's that, that's Capcom. That's it's a very. Is that a difficulty thing? Because, like, I, it, you can argue it's a difficulty thing because it does make the game easier if you choose to do those things. Or you can make the active choice like I did to and play the game as you as you can probably assume it was intended to, to be played by not using that mechanic and just being good enough to get through the levels. Um, and if you die, just go, go back to the checkpoint do it again. Well, we can talk about the fact that, like, you can buy gold orbs, you can buy red orbs, you can buy blue orbs. Like, that's... That's a problem with, that I have with the video game industry at large right now. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely an issue. Like, fucking... In terms of predatory monetization, the fact that the things that you can buy in this game mm. are things that you just unlock for being good. Oh, yeah. As, like, well, as well as you get, a, you get a gold orb every time you log in. <laughs> there's no paywall in Devil May Cry 5. Yep. And the game is as difficult as you want it to be. Yep. It's it's hard to really say it as a definitive, it's a hard issue, 100%. It's more like what you make of it. If someone says Devil May Cry 5 was easy for me, I'm like, okay, I guess you're, you're maybe good at these games and you wanted a bit more of a challenge. But like to say like it's a bad game because it was too easy, I'm like, eh. Well, here, I have, eh. like, Devil May Cry 5 is too easy. Okay, when you hit new game, when it says choose your difficulty, just tick it down one <laughs> and go, like, if you're on human, just... Bump it to Devil Hunter, and like then we'll talk. Or if you're on Devil Hunter, just go one more. Yeah, the, the Devil Hunter, Son of Sparta, and then Dante Must Die. Dante Must Die is hard, but it, like once again, Devil May Cry. It, even uh, I haven't played three, so I can't really say in terms of like actual difficulties. Five, it wasn't. It actually wasn't too hard. How many times did you play through three? Uh, just once. You didn't do it with Virgil. Uh, no, I ran <laughs> because uh, I was starting to get into the crunch of Devil May Cry coming five coming out. I'm like, I know, I know. Fuck, I gotta move on. I gotta, yeah, get, back, I gotta are, get back to four again. Your initiation was brief and violent. <laughs> Play one, two, three, four, and five comes out. We're going. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We got too much time on this sure. anyway. Platforming is basic. Its story is was that, that good. The platforming was the worst part of Devil May Cry four. Have you played Devil May Cry one. <laughs> the platforming in Devil May Cry 1 is, a, I would use the word, abysmal. Fixed camera platforming is not fun. Remember that part when you're, you're, when you're in hell and you have to jump up on the, like, on the things that come up and down, but Stop. you're, you're like, a camera that's Just. slightly below you and, like, directly on so you can't see if you're jumping past it or behind it? Devil May Cry 5, <laughs> or Devil May Cry 1, was a fucking beta <laughs> Or Resident Evil 4. They put pat and they put platforming in it. The pinnacle of platforming technology. Let, let, let's us remind you that you, you once you jump in Devil May Cry 5, you have no control of your velocity or where you're going. Or one, I mean. DMZ one, yeah. Which they did it on purpose because that, that it made it so you could control your combat and also make it look more cool when you did stuff in air. It, function, it, it facilitates having the combat be better, but in terms yeah, of platforming, I'm sorry. it's like, awful. We don't have to talk about this. I know, yeah. Like, platforming in a game, whatever. Platforming yeah. Devil May Cry, we didn't want it. <laughs> the, like, there's, like, your problem with Devil May Cry 5 platforming could have been there's platforming, <laughs> and I would have agreed with you. <laughs> Not that it's too easy. Are embarrassing and one-dimensional. Oh. 
and smashed in the middle of. Oh. I mean, we really don't have to talk about that. I, I assume he's going to talk about each character. I, I assume he's going to get, get more detail. These are all just kind of the bullet points of yeah. your of your essay. But like, oh come on, you got to reduce Nico to that. What, what was the word he used? I'm sorry. I, want, I really want to go back over that. Real one dimensional. Quick. One he said every character was shallow and one-dimensional in a story in which one of the characters is literally split into two separate dimensions. To, to literally have, do, a, do a full character study of the character. And then you can also even go deeper into terms of how Dante reacts to either one of the either one of the characters. And then also, also on top of that, how he acts to the one guy who knows he's the son of that person but doesn't want him to get involved in the situation. Dude. Yes, Yurizen is one dimensional because he's one dimension <laughs> of a two dimensional person. <laughs> okay, well, we'll get there. I'm sure. I need more in the power. power. It's one of the most da down, Dante. ridiculously imaginative and entertaining fighting system. You know what's funny about th that line though is that there's many people that are huge fans of Devil May Cry Four that would 100 percent disagree with that statement. What that it, Devil May Cry Five is like is a is a step down in terms of complexity of the combat system. It's 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 a very nuanced conversation because a lot of the complexity in Devil May Cry Four comes from glitches and other things that are that you could have, that people learned how to abuse in the system, particularly momentum and reverse. Um, I forget what it's called, but like reverse um, inputs that Devil May Cry Five just doesn't have anymore. As well as um, it's mostly momentum for what it comes down like, to. <laughs> yes, in Devil May Cry Five, I would consider Dante's new move set to be fucking overwhelming in its complexity. <laughs> yeah. But you can't, like, animation cancel to, like, guard fly around the room. Yeah. It, and, it, like, it, style on Credo. It, like, yeah, I get it. It's a nuanced conversation, but it's just, like, it's important to point out that there's, that people, that, that there's people in the room that'll be like, I think 4 was better. Devil May Cry 5. And they, could be, and they could be right from a certain point like, like, of how they qualify that hardcore statement. hardcore style beast. Dislike Devil May Cry 5 slightly because it's less jank. <laughs> Well, That's it's, basically it's what we're less talking. jank, but a jank in a way that allows you to fly across the room while doing a, a um, the spin shoot, mm -hmm. which then cancels into some other like half stinger midair bullshit. Plate. three of them. How and why this game exists? It's also okay. that it does. The thing is, I agree with him, but it's funny that he brings up saying that um, V is extremely nuanced. When when the, the biggest complaint about him like, uh, around initial release was that he's very simplistic and not good. I don't know if you saw those complaints. I don't agree no. with that. Okay. I don't go on Reddit. Fair enough. I, I, really? saw, that, I saw that complaint a good, a good amount of places, Seems but moving on. A mystery to me. But right off the bat, I have a couple questions. Why didn't they make a game with just Dante? Why does the game have three players? Because they made three of those. They made three of those, and they also wanted to continue, continue the story with the, with the character they made with four, but also do it correctly with as B Nero, who is the continuation of the story and, the, and franchise. It's important. It is important to mention that Dante has kind of reached a a sort of stagnation. His story ended in one, to be like in in terms of a super strict sense in terms of protagonist. Yeah. You can make more. He can, he found closure with his brother. And completed his vengeance. Rescued his proto mother and filled her dark soul with light. <laughs> like so much so like. Like the it's important to note that the, that that Devil May Cry three, which they wanted to have Dante as a protagonist again, was a prequel because that was the only place. Like, where do we yeah, go? Yeah, because where do we go? To disaster. Where, where do you go after one? It's where, a complete story. Yeah, well, and that's what happened. They tried. They tried to make two. Be it two had a lot other issues, but they're like, what story do we make? Uh just making him you know a guy that doesn't talk much. Different, new villain. <laughs> just like bad guy. Okay, bad guy. But that, that's for, then, there's a lot. There, like basically, yeah. This is where I basically stop watching. But yeah. And it, like, this is this 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 part's a shit show. Like this dude definitely prefers Dante to the other characters. Yeah, fine, fine, perfect. I have good news for you. <laughs> He's got three games already, <laughs> and one of them is like fucking amazing. <laughs> I like one a lot. Two is not good, but three is fucking divine. Yeah, you like. I have game series as well. As, as well, as, like, I was gonna say, like, if the game was just about Dante, what can you? Well, I, it's I, I, I hate shoehorning like, oh, what can you do with the story from that point? But it, it's a more interesting story if you expand it outside of Dante and frame it through different, frame Dante through different lenses, in terms yes. of in terms of a V lens, in terms of a Nero lens, in terms of the story of the sons of Sparta. It, there's a lot more interesting character the, choices and things you can go forward with that kind of story setup. The way that Dante interacts with like Morrison and V. 
as opposed to like the way that Dante interacts with Nero is super different. Yes. Because Dante still acts like cocky woohoo pizza man around Nero because he doesn't want to break Nero's illusion <laughs> that he's the legendary devil hunter. <laughs> but I mean, like around Morrison, he acts like a normal dude. <laughs> He's like, dude, my lights are going to go off. Like, dude, I, I got asked to this party. Can you do something about that? <laughs> and Morris is like, you never had this much trouble. Oh, God. Nero um, owns an orphanage, by the yeah, way. No, that's, yeah. Next. Characters. Why is Griffin not annoying? Why is Nico... I mean, that's a good question. Griffin like, should be annoying, but he's not. I like Griffin. I think of all the characters, I find Griffin to be the most annoying. He's the most annoying, there. but he's not actually annoying, really. No, I think he, he works well. I think the swearing in this game works, but I think Griffin does it a little too much. Uh, you, I think yeah, we already talked about. For, I think about the swearing for a is while. actually like surprisingly tasteful and in context in this game. Yeah, uh, except for when Griffin does it. I disagree with you on that point, but I can understand where you're well, coming no, from. It's not. Let's that, not get it. Was, it was like an hour long conversation well, no, last time. <laughs> I just Griffin was a lot like Behemoth in yes. this game. Oh uh, yes, uh, when he was in one. Yes, super straight man. It was the first. It was actually the first time I think in almost any DMC game. Where Dante got to stretch his legs and, like, show a little bit of, like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> like, come on, flock off, Featherface. Yeah. Um, and Griffin was like, oh, I'm mad at you now. <laughs> like, I don't understand where Griffin's... Oh, where is like, where, 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 where that comes from? Like, I get that this isn't actually Griffin. It's <laughs> actually, it's a part of Virgil. It's, like, Virgil's, I suppose, angst or anger. Pop, yeah, but that's, that, that, that's something that, that's an interesting thing to go into. And go Shadow into. is, like, his quiet broodingness and then nightmare is his anger i don't know yeah that, that's that's one that like there isn't a lot to go into but well, it's, no it's, it's not that there isn't a lot to go well, into it's that i've never tried to unpack this before i've just played true, the yeah. game and been like yeah that kind of makes sense i've never like i've never been like all right let's talk me <laughs> yeah well we'll have the opportunity next go so annoying why do i have Nico, well okay Nico is annoying but the reason that but like i would argue that's on purpose Yes, Nico is a finely crafted annoying character. Yeah. But the whole point is Her, every every line she makes is you're like, oh god, and then Nero does, oh shit, you're like you're like Nero, yeah, am I right? <laughs> that's the whole point of it. At, le at least that, that's how that's how I interpret the humor to be as. I'm just like, God, Nico's annoying. But yes. in like in like the good way. It's like the fr the, the friend in your group you like, makes a joke and everyone looks at it, you're like, fucking really? And then you all kinda have a laugh about it. Yeah. Those people are important. That's me. <laughs> to fight the same years in battle three times is this the compromise i have to make because they didn't include a boss rush in this game wait wait a minute why does yours end look so okay there was a ha there was a half boss rush and you fight your you, well, you don't really like okay, the first fight like fight against your is not really a fight you're just kind of in the room with them and you're like oh god oh god oh god <laughs> yes they made sure to have you fight yours in times when he overwhelms you multiple times because there has never been a boss in devil may cry that you cannot style on that's a good point. Yeah. And they need to show Urizen's power. Yeah, that's true. They that's need to show you, like, they they can't just show a cutscene where Dante, like, gets his ass handed to him. You won't believe and, it. And Red Bellion gets broken, and then when you finally get to Urizen, you're just like, Tomboy! Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Which is cool, I, I, it's still cool that- Trickster, you, Swordmaster, Royal Guard! It's cool that you can beat him in the, fir in the first thing, but they purposely make it really hard, obviously. Yes. But, but, but Urizen is a one-dimensional character. He's mm -hmm. one dimension of V. It's he's his rage, his power, his demonic side, you might say. Yes. <laughs> and th the only way to characterize that uh -huh. is to have him be powerful. Overwhelmingly powerful. And a little apathetic, I guess. A little? <laughs> Extremely. These are just the ramblings. Your rotten, putrid, mortal flesh. <laughs> I will teach you despair. I'm like, oh my god, he's monologuing. <laughs> Virgil, is that you? <laughs> god, he's so motivated. So yeah, like all the fights with all the fights with Urizen. There is the the, the the very first one is Nero, which you can't even. I, honestly, I won't even count in that list because you show up in the room and you're like, yeah, let's go, and then you just, you get slapped two seconds later. You're like, oh okay. Urizen is. They do such a good job of showing his power over you to you mm -hmm. that when you finally beat him as Dante oh, it feels you're great. like that's it? 
I oh, can't yeah. believe I just did that. So there's yep. like three more missions. What's going on? I don't try to remember because the, there's the, that's the first Eurasian fight. What's the second one? Is it is it is it uh, Nero again? When you come back and you still lose, you fight him as Nero. Yeah, and then you fight him as Nero. Yeah, uh, but you got a little bit farther. Yeah, because yeah. you have more power. Yeah, you cut his hand, mm-hmm. and and then, Nero is fucking. Like, even though it's like it's a it's a silly scene, like it, Nero's reaction is like yeah, and then he gets up out of his chair. <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, no. And then you fight him off as Sin Devil Trigger, Dante. Yep. And then you chase him. Yep. And then he eats the fucking fruit, and then you destroy him. And then he starts... And then you're like, Well, then he starts Wait. teleporting around the room and uppercutting you. And then you're like, hold on. What's happening here? Yeah. Like, is Dante really this strong now? Because... And once again... Yurizen's power level is so well demonstrated and executed. Yeah. Like... In f- like, I would actually have been okay if you fought him one more time. No. And, uh, uh, to continue on that train of thought, just, like, can we really consider that last fight with, with Dante against standing up your Risen, who's teleporting around the room, and drop-kicking you? The no, same that's a completely other... That's the a- same boss fight as the one where he sits in the chair and shoots laser beams at you? No, that's yours and Kiwami. <laughs> that's yours and 2.0. Like, it's a little ungenerous to consider that Evil to be this, a Eurizen fight three times. Moving on. I'm so bored. If Eurizen doesn't care, why should I care? No, you care yeah. because Eurizen doesn't care. We, I, we, we, I mean, we just said this, but the whole point is Eurizen doesn't give a shit about you. You're mortal. Yeah. You're struggling against someone who believes themselves to be so far above you that to go your to, to anger go, to go against into, him is considered funny. To go into to go into the hor- to the horrible story of Devil May Cry Five, cursed <laughs> the day that you were born, putrid mortal flesh. He almost like the whole point of that of your risen is he almost doesn't understand why the fuck you're here because he no. he only sees the world through power. He's like you're less powerful than me. What the fuck are you doing? Like try it, bitch. Like why are you here? Why? And like, then when he's I've like, already proved my power to you. And why are you fighting me again? He's getting like a lady and Trish. Yeah. And turning them into devils, he's like, you will serve to give me strength. Truly, what an honorable profession, or like something like that. Like, I don't remember, I don't remember that, but yeah. Like, he's the, like, his whole how thing, honorable. His whole thing, his only thing is strength and power. And so the, and so already being already proving that he's more powerful than you, and you come back again, he's like, fucking, I don't understand. <laughs> what are you doing here? It's, it's almost as if he's got half a brain. I shall enlighten you, Dante. I shall enlighten you. Oh God! I have and then no, he goes, Dante. And then he and has. Then the, I have no memory of this place. Oh. Well, what's that line? It's, oh God, that fight's great. Moving Why on. Why does Yurizen's final form look like Ivan Ooze from Power Rangers? Is it because Johnny Young Bosch was in Power Rangers? Is it because Ruben Langdon was in Power Rangers? Get lost. I should watch Power, Power Rangers. Daniel Southworth was in Power Rangers. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, Why can't I fight but the Sentai superhero series, yeah. or like that brand of superheroes, um, is like really popular <laughs> in Japan. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think that played into his t- the design of the final form of Eurizen, but no. But if you're saying like, oh, this dude looks like Power Rangers, I'm oh, like, all the all the pe- all the people that that are that were cast in Devil May Cry three because for their uh, ability to motion cap were also in Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> Swizzle steak. It, it's it? like oh, okay, t- it's a joke. We know. <laughs> we're just being assholes. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> If Yurizen was voiced, or Morrison is voiced by Brian Cranston. Is that because Brian Cranston was in Power Rangers? <laughs> That's fucking ridiculous. Why can't I fight Yurizen instead of the no, like saying that? Swizzle stick. Like no, I'm sorry. Like what about Ultraman? What about Jet Jaguar? There's so many other like types of superheroes in that genre yeah. that are more popular than Power Rangers. No, and I- whatever. You know what? Did you hear what he just said? By the way, it's only because Saban. Made it popular in the United States that you even know what power is- Okay. I want to point out- I fucking hate it. We're two minutes fifty in and you're already losing your mind. I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm- Next. Okay, hold on. Listen to this. Eric, why can't I fight yours in instead of the stupid rock candy swizzle stick? Where's more- Well, you mean your motto? <laughs> well, first off, I think- I- You're not worthy. <laughs> That's the thing. You're dead weight, motherfucker. <laughs> The whole point is your reason can sit in that chair and block you with the, the, the little rock candy bitch. Yeah. Like, in, step to the king, motherfucker. Take a swing. You best not miss. <laughs> oh, you missed. <laughs> I'm gonna have to break your fucking sword. Why is Morrison back? Why is Morrison black? Why does Yamato have the... I, I, I don't have an answer for that one besides they wanted to keep Morrison, but they wanted to not have the anime canon, maybe? <laughs> I mean, they 
they put anime, a little anime stuff in there because it's yeah. you know it was literally like I want everything from Devil May Cry. Yeah, I even want lines from DMC. <laughs> and then what Dante's when Virgil's you're fighting Virgil, and he's like, "Defeat me, not in a million years." Yeah, oh, like, fuck you! <laughs> you make the line. Go. God damn it! God damn. Candy Swizzle Steak. Where's Morrison been? Why is Morrison back? Why is Morrison? Wait, where's wait? Hold on. Where's Morrison been? So uh, hanging around Redgrave. Well, hang around Redgrave, but like, what other what other time would we have met in Morrison in Devil May Cry One? But like, we no, was, every single every single time every time we go in a met, Morrison is a quest giver. Yeah, exactly. He's an I information mean, broker. Yes, did he come out of nowhere? DMC or One, less? your quest giver is Trish. Yeah, DMC Two, your quest giver is Lucy. Devil May Cry Three, your quest giver is basically Virgil. No, oh, yeah. Or lady. No, you it, mean it, lady. It, she doesn't give you the quest. It's fucking Virgil. It's Virgil. He, he, he literally sends guys to break into your house and get the necklace and then breaks down your house. He sends you an invitation. Yeah, DMC4, uh, quest giver is Lady and Trish. Yeah. No, it's basically just Lady, and then Trish gets interested. <laughs> and fucking beats Dante there. <laughs> like, oh, come on. And then, and then she Lady literally dangles a piece of pizza in front of Dante while she's explaining what she wants him to do. <laughs> I just, I just. And then she a... loses the Devil Sword Sparta, and Dante's just like, "I'm sorry, that's that's my dad." You're gonna want to get that back. <laughs> like that's my dad. That's literally my dad. No, she doesn't lose it. She gives it to them as collateral. And <laughs> yeah. Dante, I was like, y "What?" <laughs> Can you imagine being Dante? Like I, I gave it to you. I mean, it's yours now. But what? <laughs> I taught you how to round trip, bitch. <laughs> That's the best sword for round trip ever. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where's my sword? Why does Yamato have the power to separate man from devil now? Why isn't getting stabbed with... Okay. Oh, here, let me... Let's look there. Yamato separated Dante's human and devil halves. Why hasn't... Get okay. Because he didn't want to. Well, that and at that point, Dante's devil have hadn't awoken. It hadn't awoken. It, yeah, it only awakens in that scene. It's it's e like you can either have it be implied to be because it's after he gets stabbed with rebellion. So it's either getting stabbed with rebellion or his um, confrontation with Virgil. I don't see how a rebellion would do it. So, I, so I, it's gonna. I'm more. It's gonna be he had a con the confrontation with Virgil made him feel things. Or how about this? Yes, Virgil didn't want to separate him. Well, in terms of that, because there's there's two ways to interpret it. Virgil didn't know it had didn't know it had had that power. It's possible. Or two, he didn't want to do it because there's there, he would he wouldn't gain anything from it. it, it he, if he separated them, he would have to fight two Dantes, or at the very least, we'd have to fight uh, Dante and then D and then Devil a hobo <laughs> who has a pizza addiction. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh shit! That's really funny. I okay. After we're done this, I have to look up at their fan art of D. <laughs> D. We can't be the only one that thought of Durazin. this. Durazin. Yeah, separate, separated Dante, it's just, it's just like, it's, it's a red Yurzen and then Papa John. <laughs> <laughs> called, called Tony Redgrave, who owns the pizzeria. <laughs> better ingredients, better pizza. Papa D's. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, okay, then go, going on to his next point. Getting stabbed with rebellion activated Dante's sin devil trigger before. What? Do you want to answer that one? What? <laughs> For it's Yamato little... splits. Uh -huh. Rebellion combines. Yes. What was he expecting Dante to combine with there? The statue? <laughs> I mean, that's all I was like. It's it's literally... It turns a, into the thing. It's literally a plot point. It's literally in the cutscene you're showing right now. He has the Devil Sword Sparta on oh, his that's back. Right. Griffin comes out and goes, He's absorbing the Sparta! <laughs> literally... Oh my god! Oh my god! Literally says in your face... He's absorbing the power of Sparta. Fucking hell, man! Apparently, he, he apparently he missed that part. Yeah. And why is it? You want to turn subtitles on? Huh? You want to turn subtitles on for this game? Oh god, it's, it's a layered <laughs> narrative. I don't want to be a dick, but it leads credence to the fact that like, oh yeah, he played the game once on on, on uh, Son of Sparta on um like Devil Hunter mode and went, oh this game's yeah, easy. Devil Hunter or human? Oh, um, he, he, why is Rebellion com like activating Shin Devil Trigger now? <laughs> activated Dante's Sin Devil Trigger before. What is his Sin Devil Trigger? And why is it stronger than Yurzen's plot fruit? If because it's the power of Sparta combined with the power of Dante. Yeah. 
Do you remember? Do you remember how powerful Sparta was? You kicked Mundus's ass in 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 universe space land while flying through universe space and turning into a giant dragon and ramming through his chest. Sparta's pretty powerful. He also separated the human and devil de- devil realms with 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 um, hey, Yamato. Man. That's it. Hey, we speak his name in hushed whispers <laughs> because he woke up to justice. Yeah. Why Spar is that powerful? We don't know. Besides him just being a cool guy, but to say no, why he probably also has a cool dad. But why saying Sin Devil Trigger is powerful as um as Urizen who ate the who ate the who ate the plot fruit who Mundus also ate. That makes sense because Sparta already beat Mundus, and now it's Sparta's power plus Sparta Dante's power. Gave his power to Dante willingly. Virgil sucked his power <laughs> out of people. Hundreds of thousands of people, unwillingly. <laughs> Dante was worthy of power and received it with his father's love, and Virgil took it. Yep. And there's all, and the, the, also on top of that, there's the whole running. Like, this is a little, eh? But they're, like the whole underlying theme of power, of love, and friendship in Del, of in Devil May Cry series of like that is also a source of power. Well, yeah, the power well, of justice well, and love. It's the, it's the power of anger versus the power of style. Y- yes. Do you realize how fucking strong Dante is in canon with quadruple S? I don't, let's not talk about that. Like, <laughs> he's unbeatable. Like, Virgil doesn't stand a chance. With quadruple S, Dante can send Devil Trigger nigh infinitely. Yeah. I mean, all he has to do is a few flips and, and do some... Virgil doesn't stand a fucking chance! <laughs> Virgil just, like, hits people with stuff. No. Yeah, well... In terms of um, if, 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 if if against your risen, yes. In, in, in the final fight between Virgil and Dante, it makes sense that they're pretty uneven. They're on even scales. I know. I'm, I'm talking about like gameplay mechanics. Yes. Y- yes. Yes. Dante's you're like, true. Virgil should literally just go up to Dante and be like, "Teach me the ways of the S rank." Yep. Yeah. God. Yeah. I right. need more power. <laughs> If Dante's sin trigger is stronger than yours and plot fruit, why didn't Virgil stab himself with rebellion instead? Virgil has a because he didn't. I know. mean, because we didn't have the uh, devil source bar. Next, you, know, you want to know why? No, but also, do you want to know why Dante? Yeah, maybe Virgil knew, but he thought he could get Yamato from Nero. Could well, you imagine if he walked in and just asked for rebellion <laughs> from Dante? Well, no, the thing is, he, it would, it would be two things of. Hey, can I have can I have rebellion and also can I have the devil sword spar the thing that we kind of fought to the death over once? Mind if I borrow that? You know what he would get? <laughs> Bathrooms in the back if you need it. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> can you fucking imagine? Like the half shambling course of virtual comes with like, hey, hey, can you get any of that power? <laughs> well, we also know that the sons of Sparta are a bit dense. That is also true. So literally, all he would have had to do is like put the hood down a little bit farther, and you're like, do, "Dante's like, do I know you?" He goes, "No, <laughs> that's a cool sword. Can I hold it?" <laughs> oh yeah, runs <laughs> yeah, my dad gave it to me. Here, take a look at it. <laughs> the shambling runs out of there. Oh, that would be the worst scene. What? Oh yeah, my dad gave it to me because he loves me more than my bitch brother. <laughs> and Virgil's just like. You have a brother then? He's like, yeah, I mean, not really. I mean, he was kind of an asshole. And then he got brainwashed and I had to kick his ass again. Did you? <laughs> Did you now? <laughs> <laughs> you okay over there? Oh, just, just sl- flesh sloughing off. It's fine. hatred. It's fine. Don't give him the satisfaction, Virgil. <laughs> Don't let him see. Be stronger. <laughs> you need more power. Remember William Blake's poetry? <laughs> the Sin Devil Trigger form at the end anyway. How? He has a Sin Devil Trigger form. This one, that that one is a bit of a eh, but it, you can you can you can imply it's because Vir- <clears throat> he recombined as Virgil, and he but he also now had the plot fruit power with him, so he he also got a huge power boost as Virgil. But now he's back to Virgil, so he now has the ability to control and manipulate that power instead of just being a raw power beast. <sighs> which then, which then releases itself in Sin Devil it a Trigger, bit? huh? Can we just simplify it a little bit? Sure. Sin Devil Trigger is your Devil Trigger when you're more powerful. Yes. And Dante got more powerful, and you notice how his Sin Devil Trigger doesn't really look like Sparta. It looks more like a more powerful version of his Devil Trigger. Yes. And you notice how 
Virgil's Sin Devil Trigger looks like a more powerful version of his Devil Trigger. It's just your DT. It's Super Saiyan 2. Yep. And they're Sons of Sparta, and they're more powerful. I mean, you can even go even farther. Like, yeah, he got Sparta's power, but he didn't really get many of Sparta's characteristics. <clears throat> because the Sparta was absorbed, and he got his own sword, the mm -hmm. Devil Sword Dante... Which is a manifestation of his power and his will. If you read the, I was blurb. about to say because like the one, the one, the one hole in our argument is that in um, when he activates uh, Shin, Shin Devil Trigger, he stabs himself with, with rebellion still. But no, the, that's not even rebellion anymore. That's a manifest. That's the Devil Sword Dante. Yes, it's a manifestation of his power and his will. And, and the thing is, like, so I was about to say, I'm filling he my, own, I'm filling my own. own hole because he's he's basically when he activates Shin Devil Trigger, he's absorbing the power of the Devil Sword Dante. Back into himself to unleash Shin Devil Trigger. Basically, if he didn't want a sword, yeah. he could just be DT'd all the time. Yes. He could just absorb the thing, and then he'd be yours in. Yes. There might be some kind of limitation to that. We don't know. It, well, could, it could just be he can't really handle that kind of power for that long period of time. Not until he masters know. Quadruple S. Maybe, like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's like, Kaioken times 10 with Super Saiyan sort of thing. Like, oh, it really hurts my bones. Well, we don't know. I don't know. We don't know. But I'm saying like... Well, th that's conjecture now. Yes. What we do know... <laughs> is that the power Sin is in Dante... Yes. Comes from the... the pa Sin Devil Trigger comes from Dante, not Sparta. Which means that when a son of Sparta gets more powerful, mm -hmm. they get a they, their devil trigger also becomes more powerful. There, yeah. I mean, we already have we already have precedent for that because if you're like B, it's a little if this is on the more conjecture side. But in Devil May Cry three, your de your devil trigger changes based on what weapon you have, implying that the, the, a lot of your devil trigger power is coming from the, the devil weapon you are currently holding. That's in Devil, a good point, actually. In devil May Cry four, it's a set it's a set form. Implying that Dante became more powerful and his Devil Trigger is more of his own Devil Trigger than the power he's drawing from the, the Devil... Uh, what are they called? The weapons. Devil Arms. Devil Arms that he currently has. Be it, this this might just be... They didn't really want to have the time to make more character models, but it's also a pretty good fill, fill gap for that, for that theory. I don't know. Look at how fucking detailed these character models are. Oh, yeah. Having, like, ten of those would be bullshit. Yeah. I'm saying, like... It, what I just said is probably the reason why, but it's a nice little theory fill gap that kind of makes sense. DMC uh, in DMC four, they probably didn't do that because they were crunched a little bit. Oh, did you, a little bit. <laughs> Fucking making you play the game twice backwards. Yeah. God. Okay, let's move on, and let's talk about plot fruit some more. What is there to say? Are they just making the shit up as they go along? Okay. Well, yes. as we just said, yes, but also there is no. no source material for Devil May Cry. I mean, this is internally consistent, <laughs> but it's also being made like a story does as long as it's internally consistent it's fine that's the whole point of a story yeah here's the thing you don't write unless it's like fucking mass effect and you have a big company backing you the mm -hmm. whole way you write a story for a game and then when the game's done and you then start you writing a story for another and then game. you come and then you might have some ideas where it could go from there but you come back and then write it write some more on yes. top of it the fact that devil may cry 5 is internally consistent is frankly fucking shocking yes because, like, once again, considering the, the reason that they want, they did a prequel for three is be like, what, what other story do we tell for Dante? Shit, we have to go in the past. Yeah. <laughs> was a good idea. Yeah. Oh, God, it was fucking great. Where the fuck is Dante's amulet? Do we not talk about the amulet anymore? Why? Okay, I remember. This is exactly where I stopped because that hurt my brain. Do you want to, do you want, like, B, it took me a little bit to remember, but, like, or do you already know where this is going? Well, his amulet and Virgil's amulet, you put them together. Yes. What does that do? Doesn't it? Did it, it give him a power it, boost? It opens up Force Edge into be the Devil Sword Sparta. That's it, yeah. Because if you remember, that was the whole, literally the entire plot of Devil May Cry 3. Yep. Is that, I remember the entire, necklace. remember the fight? Give me that. I need Give me that necklace. amulet. I need to open Force Edge to become, to get the, the, the power of Sparta. And then remember the, remember the ending of Devil May Cry 1? He kills Virgil and then goes, oh, the amulet. Oh my god, it was Virgil. And then, they, then they, they spin in the air, and they combine, and then the Force Edge, and then you go, oh, ba -ba 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 -ba, you got Devil Sword Sparta. I know. And then you know what happens after that point? It's always Devil Sword Sparta. Did you ever get Force Edge in Devil May Cry 4 or 3? I mean, 2 or 1? No! It's blatant fan service, but you do get to use Force Edge when you play as Virgil in 4 SE. I know, yes. It, it, it canonically, it makes a... Well, okay. you're just like, eee! Okay. <laughs> I love how they try, and, like, they try and sell you, like, oh, no... When Virgil's in, um, what's that name of that this, the town in uh, Fortuna? 
Fortuna. Holy shit, I remembered that. When he, when he, they try to be like, oh, it's just in the, it's just when he's there in the past. He's just kind of, he, it's not at the same time. It's just it's before the events of Dumb Cry 3. You're he like, just, he, yeah, sure. He needs to be there to get someone pregnant. <laughs> yeah, sure. He beats the shit out of Credo when Credo is, what, like two years unborn? Whatever, man. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say something and you're going to hate me for it. Sure, what? I like the design of Force Edge more than Sparta. No, I agree. I don't. Do like, you? I don't like the fleshy bits too much. I, I like the, I like the look of a of like a, a sword. Also, Force Edge is just really pretty in its simplicity. It's like all one blade. Yeah, I'm gonna be even more hypocritical and go one step further. God, what? I don't really like the de- the design of Sparta, but I do like the design of, the, of uh, the, Soul the... Caliber <laughs> of Soul Edge. What the fuck? I don't know. They're the same sword. <laughs> fuck you. You fucking. Heretic. I don't understand. What's wrong? I'm sorry. With you? I just don't get it. Fuck I don't get it either. Jesus Christ. Let's continue before I hate you more. I'm, that's impossible. Source of demon's power. Does anyone care that Virgil killed an entire... Now that's, now that's an interesting thing. Do we have any evidence of blood being the power of um, d- demons before Devil May Cry 5? Not really, but we never, got, we never, we never had confirmation of demons eats. having powers otherwise. Who the otherwise. fuck knows what a demon eats? Eventually, you're just like, what does a demon eat? Uh, uh, red orbs. What are red orbs? Also, actually at, the, actually, at the same time... About the amulet anymore? Hold on. Why is blood now the source of demon's power? Okay, I might be talking out my ass, but I'm, I, I have to look into this. Did Devil May Cry 5 say it was the... Oh, God. I, I'm gonna, people are going to hate me because I'm probably wrong. I think I'm wrong. But did they did Devil May Cry 5 explicitly say that, that human blood was the source of demon's power? Or is it just the life source for the Quilag tree? Quilag? Quil- I can't pronounce Clypod. it properly. Clypod. Clypod or Clypoth? Clypod. Um, I mean, it's food for the Clypod. Yeah. Which then implies, gives power. Which then gives power to which whoever Which implies eats the that, fruit. like... It's a source it's of power, at the very least. It's like... It's like oil. Yeah. Whereas, the, like, when you're running a demon, uh, blood is like oil, and Clypoth fruit is like gasoline. Oh, that's fair. It's refined. Refined. <laughs> it's refined, yes. Power. <clears throat> I mean, but, like... Uh, yeah, of course demons drink blood or suck blood. Like, of course they do. It's one of those things where it's like, yes, it wasn't explicitly present in previous previous Devil May Cries, but it's not, it doesn't go against it. It's not like in Devil May Cry 1, they say, oh, yes, demons are powered off of bananas. And now it's like, no, it's blood all along. Well, it's nothing's contradictory, so it's fine. Yeah, and Sparta separated the human and demon realms for a reason. <laughs> That's also true. I mean, like... At, at absolute worst, it's slightly contrived that now, that now there it's being expanded upon now. But is it really that bad? In Virgil my opinion, need, not really. Virgil needs to take power from people in a way that is damaging. Yes. Sucks their blood. Yes. Okay. Yes. Does anyone care that Virgil killed an entire city? Is Dante just... Virgil's always been evil! Virgil's always been evil, and, and also, like... There's also the fact of, like, do we consider Urizen actually Virgil? Because it seems that V yes. got almost, I, like, 90% of actual Virgil personality. Yes, but <clears throat> Virgil consciously made Urizen. Yes, I know. But it's a great characterization of Dante. Yep. Dante's like, Virgil's evil, I have to defeat him, but he's family. But he's family. I can't have you kill. go and kill your old man. The character actually gets even better because he, because Dante goes from the I need to kill him because that's all I ever do to wait, shit, maybe I don't actually have to do that. And we can maybe work things out and make and have Virgil not be a murderous psychopath. Be it, yes, he's still a horrible person as it is right now. He, like, how many people did he kill just with the fucking tower coming out of the ground in three? Enough to... Oh, God. <laughs> Why does anybody live in Redgrave? <laughs> was that Red? That was, was that Redgrave? That's a yeah, good, that's a good question. Oh my! If it was Redgrave, that's fucking hilarious. <coughs> Dude, that sucks for like the old person. Like I, a tower again? <laughs> it's like at the end of Devil May Cry three, people are like got like microphones in front of the mayor. So, Mister Mayor, do we have any idea what's up with this fucking tower? And he's like. Ah, blah, blah. There's also the question of what happened to the tower. That had, uh, the, did they take it apart or did it just disappear? <laughs> they go back to the studio. They're like, local crack, crackpot Tony Redgrave declined to comment. <laughs> <laughs> the local person who thought to, was thought to be insane is seen motorcycling down the side of the tower and then eaten by Space Whale. 
forgot about the fucking whale. <laughs> the entire level that takes place in the whale? Oh, fuck yeah! <laughs> Later seen battling to the death on the on the on the uh, the roof of the place with what appears to be his twin, but in opposite colors. Mort Eleven. Mort Eleven. <laughs> Continuing on. Or does he have no idea what's going on? If the van is indestructible, wait, what? Entire city is Dante just aloof, or does he have no idea what's going on? The entire game, like the entire game. No, he knew what was going on the whole time, but he didn't want to tell anybody because. It's his war. It's it's Dante. The he whole, can't let Nero know. Oh my know. god. The whole point of the game is it basically is slapping you over the head with hints of like, Dante knows exactly what's going on. He just doesn't want to say fucking shit to anyone. Because he wants to handle it himself. Did you, did you, like, do you know how fucking upset Nero got when he found out? <laughs> that is the scene he was trying to prevent. Because he didn't trust that Nero was strong enough emotionally. There's a reason that like... Every because single- he isn't. And a- Virgil isn't. No, yeah, because Nero the, is has the strongest emotional intelligence of any character mm-hmm. in the entire series. Mm-hmm. No one trusted him with the information, mm-hmm. and once he got it, he proved everyone wrong. Oh, it's the best. But oh yeah, like qu- the whole point, of the, like the, the entire game is Dante the entire time being coy all the time, like uh, uh, putting up the facade of the woohoo pizza, the woohoo pizza guy. But the, like the second he's alone with Nero, and he's like. It's been a long time, isn't it, Virgil? <laughs> Motherfucker! Yeah, and we can, like he didn't even figure it out on his own. V came in and was like, so I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only one that you can be a little, like, that's a little up in the air is if Dante knew V was Virgil, but it's pretty clear that he does. The fact that literally any time V and, and Dante are in the same room, Dante's like, I gotta leave. I gotta leave, I gotta go. I'm not, I'm not this here anymore. This demon is your reason for fighting. Oh, is this demon got a name? And then it zooms on his face. He's like, Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, remember the scene where he, where, where, where he frees um, uh, Trish from um, Cavalier? And then, and then he, he's like, it's, it's literally like, like making sure Trish is okay. And then he sees like V like running up. He's like, gotta go. <laughs> Gets on the motorcycle and just rides away. <laughs> He I, does everything he can to avoid all interaction with V because he doesn't want to see Virgil as a person anymore. Because he can't, he like he literally sees his duty as stopping and defeating Vir- Virgil at all costs. And he he, he knows that Virgil V is gonna wither away to nothing. He's like, I just can't get involved with him. We're at three minutes. I know. We have forty to go. I think we'll do this in parts. Okay. Because I'm having fun with this. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Moving on! If the van is indestructible, why don't they just stay there? Also... Because in order that's to just, fight and, demons, you have to go, like, outside? That's also, like, that's also, um... It's a gag? It's a gag. It, no, he asked that as a serious question. I know, I so we know. we have to give a serious answer. Oh, okay. Have you ever beat up a demon from, a, from inside a car? <laughs> have you beat up a demon with a car? Well, Dante's done it with a motorcycle. This is true. He uses nunchucks. I also kind of in three, and then they made it an actual weapon. In five. God, I love five. Have we? Have you mentioned that yet? Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of I, I've heard people say that uh, the Taurus, uh uh-huh. or the Minotaurus, whatever it is, yeah. this van is a de- is a devil arm. I yeah, I've heard that, that. Nico made. Oh, it's so dumb. It's such silly. I mean, like fucking maybe, it's but like it's super funny. <laughs> I mean, okay, this guy probably said said the van thing as a joke, but it's a really stupid criticism if it's furious. Well, he's dropping. If he says this is, this is a the joke, list that's like that's like in jokes it, with with, with actual with actual questions. Actual questions. Yeah, and so we have to unless he says something that's funny, <laughs> like actually, we have to treat it as though it's a genuine criticism. I'm gonna say it's a joke. Let's just move on. Okay. So. Why doesn't Lady ever leave the van? When did Lady get her clothes back? Why? Sh- because she was fucking tr- destroyed by Urizen, and it's very explicitly not her fight. And it's very explicitly she have to fight. It, it, it's Dante made. It's, doesn't want it's her to made. Fight. It's made very clear that the only person that has any fucking chance against Urizen is Dante. And literally, everyone's like, "Hey, Nero, why are you still here? <laughs> like, you lost. You lost your arm to this guy. What's the term?" Dead weight. Dead weight. <laughs> That's why the story is even better. Is that like? Is that Nero was just like, no, 
I'm going to fight this guy and I'm going to win. And then eventually, and then it's even better too because he gets the power to actually beat this guy being Virgil by learning that he's father and getting the conviction to have no one actually die. I mean, it's a bit overly flowery and poetic, but I fucking love it. He struggles to defeat Urizen. Yep. Because he's fighting for the wrong reason. Yep. The second he starts fighting for the right reason, he gains the power to say, it's... I'm thinking, oh, I'm like, I don't want to talk like, about it too much. Fucking angel wings start sprouting, and I, then they turn into fucking JoJo Stan. <laughs> fist, and he's like, crack, crack, V, whatever you call yourself. Fuck you! <laughs> you acknowledge me yet? Dad? So good. Your power, your strength, both, oh, you, you fucking, fucking asshole! asshole. <laughs> Alright. Act, no, that scene would have been so much better if V was like, "No, fuck you," and he's like, "Fuck you!" I'm sure. We'll, I'm sure he's gonna get to that. I know. Like, I know. And like, that's that's what that's why I was excited because like, I was I was about two minutes into this, and like, if his if he was already complaining about like the plot through, I'm like, oh my god, and, and the plot, I'm like, oh my god, what's he like? What terrible, stupid, hot take is he gonna say about the fucking final confrontation? Let's get to f- let's get to minute five. <laughs> all right. Is she wearing a jumpsuit if they had her real clothes? Where do Trish's clothes come from? Where do V's clothes come Trish is a fucking demon clone. Did you play four? She literally transforms into another person. I think that's all I need to say about that one. Yeah. Also, she's a fucking demon clone. <laughs> she's literally a demon who just wants to stay human form because she doesn't want to be a demon. All right, let's keep going. That's all I have to say about that. Where come from? Why does Lady look so suit if they had her real clothes? Where do Trish's clothes come from? Where do V's clothes come from? Why does Lady look so? Wait, where does V's clothes? Where does clothes anyone's come... clothes come from? He, he probably bought them. He probably scouted. Did, did you watch Terminator? Where did Arnold Schwarzenegger get his clothes? Where did Kyle Reese get his clothes? He was, got them. He was, stole them from he somewhere. Past a hot the topic. Red break, hot topic went. Oh, this is what I need. <laughs> Do you have any... Hey, Griffin, does this look good on me? You're looking great, boss! Do you have any William Blake? (laughs) Do you have any William Blake, like, poem tree on clothes? No? Okay, I'll I'll take the the leather vest that doesn't close properly. I'll take the Edward Allan Poe stenciled graphic tee, thank you. Does this come with Vegeta? (laughs) Do you have any Kylo Ren apparel? I'm going... I'm going to Galaxy's Edge later. I need to complete the costume. I lost my V accent. <laughs> hey, look so old. Since when does Wait, Lady what? Where do V's clothes come from? Why does Lady look so young? Why does Dante look so old? I mean, she doesn't look young. She doesn't look like that young. Be it, it, it's a bit of the anime of just like yeah, women kind of look the same in t- from the ages of twenty to like forty, and then they're and then they just become e- old instantly. In terms, that's of, an Asian thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, in terms of Dante looking older, it's because he was unconscious for three months and grew a beard while unconscious. That's right. He got knocked the fuck out. Also, having a stent in hell probably doesn't do that much for your complexion. Yeah, because because canonically they they added wait no canonically two is actually before four now because they changed the timeline a little bit. Which I mean, to be fair, they're basically just like we just don't want to talk about two, so let's put it as far back in the timeline as possible. Like to be fair, yeah. But okay. Since when does Lady take orders from Nero? Why is she so? Wait. When did Nero ever when order to do anything? Did she, he probably said stay in the van after she was literally a demon and probably had most of her power, like energy. She probably needs a nap. Yeah, I don't. I didn't see that as an order so much as a very good suggestion. I don't remember there being an order. There's also the fact of like Lady knows, like yeah, I really cannot. I, there's nothing in this fight I can really do to help besides maybe kill some demons. Dude, she's Nico. She's not even a demon. Yeah, exactly. She's a person that has that's, that's extremely skilled. She has heterochromia, and that's the weirdest thing about her. <laughs> like, okay, yes, I would have liked to have seen Lady and Trish do more in this game, and I hope that there's going to be a Ladies' Night DLC or playable characters in the special edition. Ladies' Night DLC. That is what was being kicked around for a while in terms of rumors, and or it's it's just an expansion pack where it's just those two doing a, doing a job. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's not bad. I know. And, like, calling it Ladies' Night, I'm like, I want that. Okay. But, yes, that is a valid complaint of having Lady and Trish do more in this game. I, yeah, I get you. I want that more. But, uh, but Yeah, but the more that they do, like, 
But well, once okay. again, like, once again, you want you want to remember this game is framed, and it it's it's the story story of the Sparta family. They wanted to have it be them. Basically, the thing that I think that they could do that would still fit with the story is each of them have a mission where they go and exterminate a Clyphon root. Exactly. That, 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 that's, that's fucking it. That's as most as they can do in the story. Like, be it, I would have liked if they implied they did something like that. Be it, like, having them shoehorned into doing nothing was a bit blunt. Um, what we were talking about lately, and Trish not do, have it, being kind of bluntly shoehorned into not doing much in this game. Be it was, like, I wish they had, like, all some one-off lines or implied that they had killed, as you said, exterminated some Clyphon roots. They might have. They might have. They might have. I wish they, they had said something along those lines. But I'm saying... In terms of the overall story, there's a reason why they didn't have them be front and center doing more yeah. things. They never had this much trouble. Never had this much trouble. Never had this much trouble. So I'm saying, could, it be, could, it, could their storyline have been written a bit better? Yes. Is it an overall issue? Not really. No, not really. Boring. Why is she such a bitch? Why didn't Dante ever tell her? What? What? Did you just... Did you just call Lady a bitch? I don't... What? What? She gave genuine, heartfelt advice, moral advice to Nero, and traded some quips with Nico. Okay, to be That's fair, what she did. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this line again. I think what he means by bitch is in terms of not do. Okay. From Nero. Why is she so boring? Why is she such a bitch? Why didn't? Doc okay, I don't know how to interpret that. I, I, uh, my brain was saying maybe uh, I'm trying to be generous to this guy. Maybe he was saying that like she bitch in terms of like submissive, not doing much, but like. That didn't sound like that, did it? Not really. When was she mean in this game? To anyone? She didn't want to dig a hole for a second. And then she started trading quips. Let's just move on before we get more mad. Yeah, that doesn't mean... That was kind of nothing. Uh, <laughs> Dante ever tell Nero that Virgil was his father? Why didn't he ever... I mean, we just talked about because that. Because of the plot of Devil May Cry 5. <laughs> because the entire plot of Devil May Cry 5. He literally, Dante wanted to take care of the entire Virgil problem and have Nero never know because he thought that would be better for Nero as a person and his growth. Because, and because, because that exact same like path of vengeance is, is that he, what Dante almost lost himself to and he, when he watched Virgil lose himself to. <sighs> I got nothing else to say. I, 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 Fairly succinct. <laughs> I'm trying to get to minute five here. Such a bitch. Why didn't Dante ever tell Nero that Virgil was his father? Why didn't he ever tell Virgil that? Even okay, sorry. I do have something to say about sure. that. What? It is kind of ridiculous. Yeah. That Nero never asked <laughs> because oh. they are so similar. <laughs> but at this point, that's actually kind of like a funny. funny gag. It is. Yeah. That fucking uh, that that, that um, Nero never put together. Like we're related. Hey, we have white hair. And we both have powers both of like devils. Really strong. And wait, didn't you say that this sword had to stay in the family? And then you gave Why'd it you to give me? it to me? <laughs> and why does it react with my right arm? And, th and that's literally when Dante just goes, "Oh, do you hear that noise? That's the pizza alarm." And he oh, backs. Fuck, man! I gotta be anywhere else right now. <laughs> I got, I, I'll, I'll see you, man. Don't do anything I wouldn't. Just <laughs> what? Anything? That's right. Fucking like his, his, his internal like parental alarms going up. I can't be here. I'm not. I'm not grown up enough for this. I am uncle status only, young man. <laughs> I can show up to the house drunk, and it's really not a problem. <laughs> the second I, I start offering more than words of wisdom every other Tuesday, things become not okay for me. I hung up on a child who asked me to their birthday party. <laughs> Don't talk to me. <laughs> Unless you bring pizza. Then then, then we we'll probably get a half an hour conversation out Do of Do you have pizza? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. All right, this question. Over. Okay, okay this is a slight tangent, but I really do love... Oh, a slight tangent? I really How do... long have we been recording? I really, I really do like the um, the whole like characterization of Dante of being... He's, at core, a really good guy, but in terms of personal responsibility and overall responsibility, he's very... Not good. He can't keep the lights on. <laughs> like, he's an extremely flawed individual. Like, just with a heart of gold. That's it. Do we... So, like, we know that, like, because of Morrison, because he ordered the sword, because of Trish and Lady, like, we know that this world knows, or part of this world knows at least enough about demons, so that there must be some kind of black market for devil arms. Okay, do you want to know why... Okay, why... Two reasons. Two, two things. 
why Dante's in so much debt, and also, too, why he never has devil arms in, in, in next games. Okay, I want to take a guess. Okay, yeah. One, because he has to keep rebuilding his shop. <laughs> okay. And two, probably because he just loses them. Uh, he, he has to keep selling them for, 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 rent, for, the, for rent money. <laughs> and, and he actually does. He them. actually sells them because he needs to pay off his debt to Lady, who he's still in debt to. Oh my god. <laughs> That's why in 4, Lady's like, yo, the order of the sword, go there. He's like, I don't want to. She's like, you're gonna fucking go there. <laughs> you're gonna fucking do it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you, you thought it was because he was investigating his dad. No, Lady's like, bitch, I want my money. I can't help but notice how you're not paying me right now. <laughs> oh, uh, how much did that pizza cost? Uh, <laughs> she's like, shit. Dante in a closet in a house that's on fire and then tell him to change his name and start a new life? Did you know she was about to be crushed off screen by a wooden beam for no reason? Why is Virgil so stupid? You want to know why the reason why she was crushed by a wooden beam? It's because the house was on fire. Do you want also why that she didn't take him out anywhere else? Because they were being attacked by demons. They were being attacked by demons everywhere. It's amazing that Dante even lived. Yeah. In any way, shape, or form. It's amazing that Virgil even lived, even though he was out by himself and was heavily implied to be attacked by demons by himself. Yeah, but he's fucking Virgil. That's what I'm saying. He, like, I don't even want... I don't, like... He's probably, like, fucking just beat the shit out of them. But that's, that's where... To go into the plot, that's where all his trauma comes from, is that he felt like he was absolutely abandoned and utterly helpless. And he never wants to feel that powerlessness and helplessness ever again. And so the only thing he comes to value at all is the ability to hold power over others. And so that no one can have power over him ever again. This is also a bit of a tangent. Yes. But that was the original, uh... Semi. Original, uh... Origin of Batwoman. Really? Yeah. The good she one. She was, uh... Yeah, the original Batwoman. <laughs> in, like... Early 2000s or late 2000s? I'm a woman! I'm a woman! <laughs> oh, God. Okay, sorry. Uh, she was she was mugged. Yes. And she's like, never again. Like, huh. I will never be helpless again. I, so I, okay, as a, back, on... as a backstory, I really kind of like that. It's yeah. extremely simplistic, but it makes a lot of sense from, like, a, 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 in an emotional, personal level. And so she puts, she makes her own suit, and she goes out and starts doing vigilante shit, and then Batman is like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> And eventually they broke her. What are these vigilantes going around my town taking justice in their own hands? Oh god, yeah. <laughs> and so eventually they like broker a deal where it's kind of like a weird like mentor internship thing. Okay. And she kind of just grows and comes into her own from that. That's pretty fucking cool, actually. It's similar to uh, Dark Knight Returns. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Yeah. Although, except except that one's a much more of a groupie. <laughs> she sought Batman out, mm. whereas Batwoman is like, yeah, I don't need your help, and he's like, oh no, you do. And this is my town, bitch. <laughs> it's also, it's not that you, you don't need my help protecting you from criminals. You need my help protecting you from me. <laughs> I have your name. I have your address. Uh, I also have a cell ready for you at fucking Blackgate. <laughs> we can go there right now. <laughs> or you can promise me that you'll never kill anyone. <laughs> Remember Killer Croc? Yeah, I arrested him. <laughs> I beat him up. <laughs> Look at this shit. This is normal human muscles. <laughs> Alright, let's keep going. We're almost there to five minutes. One more minute. Fighting Dante all he cares about now. Is the only reason Dante and Virgil can't stop fighting so that Nero can have that big moment at the end where he says... The only reason they keep fighting is because that's what they feel like their their entire destiny and purpose is... For, is, is, is. Is that they must fight each other to prove which one, each, which either one's philosophy is the correct philosophy. Although that's how that. Okay, it's a bit. It's a no, bit. Sorry, yes. I'm, I'm going to make this simpler. Sure. He just said Virgil <clears throat> and Nero, Dante just can't stop fighting. Isn't that stupid? Yes. <laughs> that's the plot of Devil May Cry Five. <laughs> You're not. That's entirely true. Yeah. To, yeah, to get the to get the nuanced answer, it's because Virgil wants to prove which philosophy is the correct one. Because he, for him, it's might makes right, power makes right. For, for uh, Dante, it's I must stop my brother from being a fucking asshole and killing everyone. And so I, even though I love him, even though he's my brother, I need to kill him. And so that's why they always fight. Dante views it as his duty to put Virgil down because he's family. And it's misguided. Yes. Which makes it <clears throat> seem weird. Exactly. That's what. That's why that final confrontation, there, where there's like when they first get up there, you kind of feel weird about it. You're like, this doesn't feel right. 
Like, why are we fucking fighting again? Yeah. Jesus Christ! I mean, once again, we, we there's there's Mr. Ham Fist in the sky that's somehow missing this guy with 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 Virgil being like, if you if our places were reversed, Dante. I forget the rest of the line, but would uh would you be where I'm standing? Would I be where you are? Yeah, he's just fucking like. And then that's he's like that's that. How that, many times I'm gonna do my Virgil impression? How many times have we fought, Dante? And Dante's like, it's the only memory I have of us since we were kids. That interaction sums up the entire... I think we should stop there. Oh, 40 that, seconds. That, that sums 40 up. more seconds. That sums it up. Stop fighting and then proceeds to fight both of them to stop them from the initial fighting. <gasps> why does Virgil say that he doesn't care about his son when fighting Dante? Yes, that is why Virgil is so... Why Virgil goes... About his son. Yeah. Do you want to finish, do you want to finish his statement before you continue talking? <sighs> Well, look, look, for, 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 for his context before you start talking. To fight both of them to stop them from the initial fighting. Okay. Why does Virgil say that he doesn't care about his son when fighting Dante, but then immediately tells Dante, Nero is my son. Yeah, dumbass. Why is... Okay. Do you want to answer that or do you want me to? You'll do the son thing. I'll do the why is Nero so swole. Okay, I'll do the son thing. Because Virgil is emotionally stunted and doesn't know how he feels. He's lived in hell for a very long time, was a literal demon-controlled demon spawn demon guy. He was a fucking puppet. A puppet for a very long period of time. He was so much of a puppet that other people saw him and was like, we can make puppets out of this puppet. Yes, and, bef and then before that... He had one relationship, ran away, became a demon puppet, but then before that was scarred at, like, fucking ten or younger about, like, I can't trust anyone, my own mother and family abandoned me in my time of need, I must become more powerful! And so, so when he finds out he has a son, and he's like, I have a son, I have my own prodigy, but I shouldn't care about him, but I do care about him, but I don't, but I do. What's going on? Do yeah. I do I care about him because my son's powerful, or do I care about him for other reasons? I don't understand. That was the whole V. Here, take this William Bick poetry. Yeah, the V <laughs> stuck to Nero like white on rice. Ugh. But is it because it's Nero, or is it because he thought Nero could was, defeat Urizen? Yeah, I don't know. I actually, I don't, I got, I don't know. I think it's, initially, I believe that's hundred percent the thing. But I think it started to change that exact moment when um, Nero carried v, v all the way down to Urizen. And Nero's just listening to Virgil's life story. I mean, V's life story, basically. Or, uh, or when uh, Nero saved him from Mrs. Thafafadlas. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Or when Nero saved V from Mrs. Thafafadlas. Chicken lady? Yes. Yep. Wow, someone saved Virgil. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, oh, so that's what it feels like. <laughs> uh, that's what it feels like. That's, that's kind of nice, uh, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God damn it. I'm sorry. I just went once again, like, also, like, even though, like, the story, the, I'm going to say the story could be better written in terms of highlighting some of these things, but isn't it also a really great plot thread of having Virgil not become a douchebag by subjecting him to the very thing he, he he feared the most, becoming helpless? Putrid mortal flesh. Putrid mortal flesh and becoming as helpless as physically possible, so much so he has so little power he can barely stand yeah. a lot of the times. And that's what eventually get, makes his heart grow three sizes that day. Yes, and then on the, the Nero thing. Yeah, okay, your, your turn. The really cool reason... The reason that Nero is so swole, the cool part about it, is that we're not entirely sure why. Yeah. I've actually read a, ra a rather, well, well, I've, I've read a rather thing, interesting theory. The one thing we do know uh -huh. is that Nero is the first... Actually, he's only the second uh, in the Sparta lineage mm -hmm. that really fights for the right reasons. Yep. Yeah, and, Dante and, fought and for the, revenge, uh -huh. and Virgil fought out of anger. Yep. Uh, Nero is the first person... Aside from Sparta, to fight completely selflessly. Yes, a hundred percent. He just and, straight comes to the fight and go. No one's dying today. And he literally just fucking spontaneously blossoms <sighs> into like hyper swole demon angel energy. I, I'm gonna be telling honest. That scene is probably my favorite scene in like the last few decades of like anything. It's where he it's almost, where he calls Kyrie and he just talks about. I was so happy when they talked about Credo. Like the Cry Four is a lot of issues, but like. Calling back to that relationship with Credo, yeah. even though it's not expanded well in four, is like fucking great. Like I, I, I hated myself for not having enough power. It's almost like the whole Nephilim idea uh -huh. was supposed to be Nero the whole time. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And but it's, maybe it's, it's almost it's almost like they took elements from Devil May Cry, DM, uh, DMC Devil May Cry, 
that were actually that actually worked some good tidbits and used them well in Devil May Cry 5. I kind of feel like Itsuno always wanted Nero to be not a Nephilim, but like Nephilim adjacent. Yes. But he's like, yo, Capcom's really breathing me with my neck. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to make five. I Let's just put some of them, the ideas that I like into this uh -huh. focus grouped, like weird reboot garbage <laughs> and just see if anything works. Yeah. He's got fucking angel wings, dude. I know. What is it? Well, they're they're angel. Like his fucking devil trigger gets literal wings. Feathers. Yes, actual feathers. It's the it's it's it, it's the first. I and mean, uh, this might this might take some more time to corroborate, but it, it really is. It's the first devil trigger that's not spiny or scaly. It's entirely feather, like kind of birdish based. Dude, do you know yes. what the possible existence of actual angels could do to the Devil May Cry oh, universe? Jesus Christ. Like it would, it would also like it would also like fuck with like Devil May Cry one. So like, it, not necessarily in a bad way because you remember Mundus's whole thing is like, I am God. I I make myself look like God. I look like a giant statue. I'm super cool. Worship me. And then Devil May Cry four, where they're like, I am God. I look like a big statue. Worship me. Worship me. <laughs> like, ugh. like maybe, God. Maybe that's the only place you can go with six. Possibly. Like, I found out who my dad is. Who the fuck is my mom? Oh, God. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, I, I, I feel like they should keep her as a human because I, that really makes it a lot better. At least for Sparta's story. Yes. But. Okay. Uh, I would I would like some Fortuna shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you thought. Oh, for Nero. You're right. That'd be interesting. Yeah, well, Nero's like, I found out who my dad is, but who's... My we know who Dante's mom is. It's Eva. She's just a lady. I, 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 thought you were, I thought you were referring to Eva. She's like her quiet... Her charisma, her quiet determination mm -hmm. fucking basically saved the human world <laughs> from eternal demon like rule yep. because she woke her husband up to justice. To justice! <laughs> oh, God. We're almost there. That's the thing. Yeah. Like... Some people think it's really patronizing that in any story with, like, a hyper-masculine, like, really good male role model... Yeah. People say, like, behind every great man is a good woman. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like... It was for Sparta! <laughs> like, Sparta... It's kind of funny how we, we have more characterization for Eve now that we do with Sparta, but that's Finland fine. Saga. Like, it's these... Like, true, quiet compassion... Mm -hmm. That can just change someone's whole life. Yeah is not really considered a powerful feminine trait anymore, and that really pisses me the fuck off. Okay, before we, yeah, uh, yeah, before we get down that tangent. But be, before we, yeah, go, we, up, we're before, before before we go off that tangent, it works well for Nero as well. Well, yeah. Because that, that, like, the entire thing that galvanizes him into the correct course of action, he's call, Kyrie, he just calls Kyrie and just talks to Kyrie. Kyrie, Kyrie doesn't even say much but more than, than besides of like, Nero, I, you're a great fucking person. I know you know what's right. And he's like, fuck, you're right. I know what I need to do now. I need to jump really high. I need to jump really high, grow, <laughs> and grow angel wings, and beat the shit out of my dad. But don't kill him. No. <laughs> I'm gonna stab him multiple times, though. I might call him an asshole, too. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna drop an F-bomb, Kyrie. I'm sorry I had a time. <laughs> sorry I had a time. I Kyrie, drop a couple dollars in the swear jar. I'm gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a late night. <laughs> they have a swear the jar. I, I, no, I was gonna say, I bet they do. <laughs> my I haven't I haven't read the prequel novel because it's like because I've only I've only been able to re I've only read like Cliff Note translations. But my favorite scene that I know exists is that uh, Nico like uh, they're in the, in the kitchen. Nico Nico and Nero are just at the kitchen table doing stuff. Kiri is I think cooking or something, and something along the lines of Nico says so, like some kind of swear word, and Nero like kicks her in the shin like you don't swear in front of Kiri. <laughs> Dude, shut up! Dude, shut up! <laughs> Uh, that's like, awesome. That's what I, I love. I, they're amazing. I love Nero and Kyria. It's my favorite thing. Thirty seconds. We're almost there. Is Virgil alive? Why does Dante decide? I mean, like, that is not a question that even deserves answering. <coughs> I know. You're like, okay, let's, yeah. <laughs> like, Devil May Cry okay. one. He, he explodes into something. Who knows? Okay, he's basically saying like, what between one and five, like. How it implies he, how he's he alive. Regain corporeal form. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, probably because when Mundus was destroyed, uh, his like his will over Nero, or Nero, Virgil, <laughs> in whatever form Virgil currently was in, mm-hmm. because we know he was he changed forms regularly, mm-hmm. because Mundus literally remade him yeah. into the form that he wanted. Yeah. Uh, take Mundus's control. We already know that Virgil is like a fucking beast. Mm-hmm. I like I wouldn't put it past him to figure it out. Oh, like yeah. that doesn't bother me. Yeah, and there's all and there, and in terms of time period, it, it, like I would imagine it's not very easy to get out of hell. If, and so he had to get out of hell and then also like shamble his way all the way to Nero to rip his arm off. Could you imagine if like he just shows the middle of nowhere and he's just like, oh, okay, let's go. <laughs> like, all right, let's get going. Time okay. to sh- time to corpse shamble my way. Yeah. <laughs> Hell's like the nether. Oh god! Actually, that's four hell hold feet. On. Is like wait twenty five hundred feet. Okay, like, he, he, okay, he had <laughs> he, he had it, so he he can do his teleport slashes. But like, I just realized he shambles all the way to. I think they still live in Fortuna. Fortuna cuts Nero's arm off, gets, and then he shambles all the way and to, then red, gets to fucking <laughs> red grave. Well, the thing is, he could have done it anywhere. He just wanted to do it in his manner because emotions. And Nero is not, Virgil is not the type to call a taxi. He's walking <laughs> the whole way. I mean, they show him teleporting out, so he probably mostly teleported there. But yeah, he he, he was like, no, I'm going all the way there. Even though I'm almost dead, fuck you, I'm going all the way there. I need to, I need to cut myself in front of mommy. <laughs> I lo- like, once again, it's also just a fun, like, I love how melodramatic fucking Virgil is. It's like, no, I have to re- I have to reborn myself in my own burnt-up home. I can't just do it anywhere. Even though I won't remember it anyway, because I'm separating the part of my ma- myself that remembers that part. But no, it has to be here! I have to be cool, guy. <laughs> Decide to stay in the underworld. Why do Dante and Virgil walk away to cut down the clip fluff like it was their plan all along? Because that was the next thing they needed to do. And they went down there because Nero, they literally say Nero's up here, and and they Vir- also want to spend some. They also kind of want to like get away from everything and kind of just work things out as siblings. I think you could, you can kind of imply. And Virgil lost to Nero, and 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 like, and yet he changed the subject to like, what's the next thing we do to avoid? He's like, I can still fight, but. <laughs> but there's something else more important to do. I like. But oh, hell's gonna take over now. Yeah, so yeah, let's go yeah, do that. Yeah, like Virgil's internal dialogue. Like, nice segue. <laughs> Just like hide the shame. You're still cool. You're still cool, buddy. You're still cool. You're still cool. <laughs> You'll get your DLC. I'll be playable. God I'll be it. playable. Like, uh, it's it's funny too because like it, it's literally a line. Like Dante's just like, wait, why are you going down there? Because you're up here. Even though they've never talked about it before, if all they had to do was sever the clip clop roots, why did we waste so much time fighting Urizen? If Nero's never seen because Urizen was the main like was the main issue, the Clifod roots are pretty easy to because sever. there is nothing in hell that is stronger than Urizen. <laughs> yeah, you, you need like even if you cut yeah even if you had cut down the Clifod root even you, yeah the behemoth yeah says I want to eat the fruit I will be the king of hell not him we are dealing with a character we are dealing with a threat. That is way so much stronger than a hell portal. Kind of just a minor inconvenience compared to him. Y- yes. Also to the fact that he already beat Dante and Nero. And they're like, alright, so we, I, we need to probably take care of him. The, 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 the giant plant thing? Kind of a secondary. We can we can kind of weed whack that once we take care of the guy that can kill everything. It's a big tree. <laughs> be it, I, I, I will once say... Once you kill the Lorax, be the it, trees will go down. Be it, I will say, I will say... It is. It is like if I, can I, I, I'm. I'm trying to remember who mentions the power of the fruit. I think. I think Lady is. So it's a. I, I think it is a little contrived that you're like Lady. Sh- doesn't, doesn't first say, "Hey, this tree. It kind of. It could give him infinite power. We should maybe take care of that." Yes. But at the same time, if if you said that to Dante, Dante would be like, "Or we could just stab him in the butt." Yeah, Dante's not going to go for the tree. He's going to be like, no, I'm Dante, gonna no. Dante would have ki- taken out the tree, and then he heard the name Virgil. <laughs> He's like, and no. then it stopped being about that, <laughs> and now it's about Virgil. We're in this box now. 
Particularly, too, because, like, in, in, in Dante's mind, he was like, I'm going to go kick his ass, and then we're going to cut down the tree. No big deal. He didn't really anticipate being knocked unconscious for three months. There's a lot of people in Redgrave. We'll be fine. <laughs> we have a lot of time. There's a lot of blood they got to suck up. We, we got plenty of time. It's not like the things are going to, like, jettison off into space or something. Oh. <laughs> before why does he wear a hood to hide his identity at the very least um I, his skin is cracking his skin is cracking and i don't know the sun might hurt him like he's not in a good place right now <laughs> he doesn't have yamato he's basically crumbling like v does later yes so and he's walking through fortuna <laughs> he doesn't want to draw a, a, so a, like a, a single dude with like a P angelo knight's like yeah you look weird What's up with that? There's also the and fact that there's also the fact that Fortuna is painfully aware of the existence of demons and anything that looks non-human. You're like, I'm gonna fucking stab that shit. I'm gonna do that thing where like a bunch of dudes like pin you to the wall with their big lances, <laughs> and then we're gonna like cut you, and Angus is gonna be like, Yeah, cut that. Yeah. Ah. Like they, they literally know Nero saved the entire town, and they still ostracize him because he has a demon arm. Yeah. That's literal canon. That's how that's how like fucking scared Fortuna is. Of demons, be they to get invaded. But moving on. Nero would think that it was Dante, but wouldn't that help Virgil ambush him? Is Nero? I don't. I don't think. You know what he didn't say when he saw the dude with the hood? <laughs> what? Sup, Dante? I don't think Nero would have mistaken a half cracked up, different, bo like basically different body shape, different voice, and different hair. No, he thought he was a hobo. He offered him like food. <laughs> That's stupid. That's, yeah. That's stupid! Yeah. I mean, like, okay. If, if Virgil, which he never would, sink to the level of tr of impersonating Dante to get closer to Nero, which, first off, he doesn't oh, even... Oh, God, he'd be so mad. <laughs> first off, Nero, I don't like, Virgil probably wouldn't even know that, that Nero even knows Dante. To, to be fair, honestly. Yeah, I don't... Do you think at this point in the story, Virgil knows that Nero is his son? I don't, he, I don't think he knows or gives he a shit. He just senses the presence of Yamato and wants it back. Yeah, basically. I, I don't think he stopped the question of, like, well, why is the sword in this guy's arm? Fuck it, I need the sword, I don't really care. Considering also... Honestly, at this point in the story, he's basically suicidal. Because think of it this way. He's getting the sword back so he can literally cut himself out of himself. Every part of him that will, that will remember and have emotion is going to be gone. That's true. He doesn't care. He's not even thinking about anything anymore. That's the true, true. Yeah, and that's and that's why and that also probably why like V Sotus like when he when, the second he gets cut out, he's horrified. He's like, oh shit, I'm the guy that has to remember this now. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh fuck, I lost the roll of the dice. I'm the I'm the fifty percent bad. Oh my god, <laughs> cursed genes, <laughs> brother. <laughs> I got all the old man's Nero's recessive genes and tattoos. Oh god, yeah. Right. Help Virgil ambush him? Is Nero's arm his arm or is Yamato his arm? Nero's absorbed a lot of stuff before, so why does it specifically turn into Yamato and not all the other stuff? Because for because Virgil, Virgil wanted, wants Yamato. Because Virgil wanted Yamato. And I I don't know what else to say. Like, what else does it absorb besides okay, yeah. undescript demon power? So the Devil Bringer absorbs powers and Absorbs things and gets those powers. Yeah. But Yamato is the only thing that is like specifically a, a, inside of it. Specifically a tangible object that is going to that that he keeps that he could also bring out and Yeah, use. when he DTs, he fucking like his stand gets it. <laughs> when he DTs, he doesn't get like the blue orb that lets him snatch. <laughs> he gets Yamato. Oh god. Let's try and get to like the be to like the end of his intro to the video. We're almost, I, feel, I feel like we're almost there. Fine, fine. Why doesn't V tell anyone that he's Virgil? Because that's a good way of getting your fucking <laughs> ass beat. <laughs> hey, by the way, everything we're fighting right now, uh, it's my fault. Yeah, Dude, Virgil's like, yeah, so that dude who's killing everyone? It's me. That's me. And then Crew Cut and all the other rest of the Marines are like, World Star! <laughs> and just repeat the shit out of him. <laughs> Motherfucker! <laughs> Get his king! <laughs> What a stupid question. What a I'm stupid sorry. Stupid question. There's also the fact that, like, we—I mean—he explicitly tells Dante. We know that, and mm -hmm. there's a reason he doesn't tell Nero is because there, he probably figures out that. But he probably figures out. V probably figures out that he's probably does, his son. Nero and Nico. Are the oh only no, two no, no, sorry. That don't know. Sorry, no, he doesn't. We know that. He, we know that V doesn't know that Nero's a son. But 
he doesn't tell Nero because I think he, I think he, he need he needs Nero to be on his side. He needs Nero to beat Urizen. And if he says anything to compromise that relationship, he's not going to do it. The only time he and he, and he gets anywhere near close to that is when he's literally that close from dying. When he's like fucking like his cheeks like sloughing off. He's like, hey Nero, I kind of want to talk about my life story. But he's also extremely vague about it. He doesn't actually say anything. They're brothers, you see. <laughs> yeah, like, like, look, he, like th- that's his last confession. And even then, in his last confession, he's just like, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what do you think about abandoning children? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> Of course, I would never do that. Of course, I would never do that. Right, Griffin? I'm far too motivated. <laughs> Ask Shadow, he'll vouch for me. <laughs> Verge! Dante oh, doesn't V tell anyone that he's Virgil. Or did he tell Dante? Okay, at least he, at least he admits that. Because he does. Yeah, fucking of course he does. <laughs> they, look, literally, this demon is your reason for fighting. Okay. This demon got a name. Vermundus. <laughs> like, oh my god. It's like... Literally no other demon could have gotten Dante off his ass so quickly. It, probably Mundus. He, actually, even then, even then, he probably would have stopped and gotten the pizza. Be like, oh, I gotta kick Mundus' ass again. But it's virtual. It's like, Where is he? <laughs> Wait, that <I'm> motherfucker. <laughs> That yours in was Virgil. Why doesn't he tell Trish or Lady? Why doesn't anyone- Because it's his war. It's very clear that Lady kind of figures it out. And V tells Trish. Yeah. Like, the, the, like they, they kind of separately figure it out, but Dante is the He never he doesn't tell anyone anything. He does his own thing. He doesn't ever want to. He no, doesn't want to ever. He's extremely vulnerable. He's extremely vulnerable, and so he doesn't tell anyone anything. He, he always wants to solve it kind of on his own most of the time. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just, let's just keep going. That's fine. Everyone in this game yeah. communicate vital information to each other? Why is Dante's business failing? Why isn't Trish we can t- t- <laughs> I mean, we've been over like, yeah, we've, we've, already, we've, already, we've already discussed that. We've been over that one. Fuck yeah. We can skip this. Yeah. Is it because Dante sucks at everything now? Why does Dante. He always has! <laughs> the only thing he's good at is killing demons. He's well, okay. the legendary devil hunter. Okay. Literally, the, like, <clears throat> it, it is a slight retcon going from. Um, from one to four, in a way, because in one, it, 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 like they show nothing about his shop besides him just being a cool guy in a shop. Like, do you know the pass? Like, what's the password? Mm-hmm. That's that's it. Ever since, but even then, in the like part one, they show him being a wacky, crazy woohoo guy, and so like they kind of expanded upon that in both three and 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 four, kind of being like, yeah, he's too lazy to actually give a shit. It might not be lazy. Well, yeah, like. I've seen people incredibly talented uh-huh. that just have no mind for business. Exactly. Yeah. That that I believe is that he's extremely good at killing demons, but like in terms of ma- ma- like managing a te- like a, 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 a finances, he's like, get, give me a pizza. He doesn't even understand like business. People come in and he offers them the bathroom. No, you have to make a purchase if you want to use the <laughs> fucking bathroom. First exorcism, then there's a bathroom. God damn right. Don't flush it. There's no water. <laughs> to stop something easily preventable from happening long enough to dramatically run to stop it even though it's already happening because uh, that scene is like there's a lot you have to really kind of dig into that scene to really kind of figure out my interpretation of that scene is that is that dante wanted to let virgil like solve the the own issue of virgil he didn't anticipate he didn't anticipate that v would be would would uh, combine back together into virgil he thought that v that he thought that that he was, he was he gave Virgil one more one chance. last chance. Basically, I'm trying to like okay, you don't know like the story, but like basically the, the kind of like the uh, the honorable seppuku execution sort of thing. Yeah, no, I know about that. Yeah, just like like this is your last time to redeem your honor. Take it. And he literally, as Virgil is like, and our roots together join. Dante's like, what did he say? What did he say? Oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> Like, technically, if you want to get, like, really nitty-gritty, if he'd done a stinger, he could have gotten there sooner. Yes. If you want to get nitty-gritty, but it's just, like, there's a reason... And he does a stinger in cutscene later in the game. That's true, you're right. But... But there's a reason... Still fucking books it after. There's an entire reason why he let V go up to Urizen at that exact Mm -hmm. moment. Like, three times? Wait. To dramatically run to stop it, even though it's already happening? 
like three times. Three times? Okay, what was, what was that first one? I'm not. I, I don't remember that first one. Like, oh, that was when that was when your risen left. I think. Oh yeah, your risen fucking teleports. Yeah. How dare you not capture a teleporting person? Yeah, yeah like he, he teleports out using blood powers. He, yeah, that, that one, we've already that, covered. That we already covered, and the last one he teleports out after having fought a superpowered Urizen. Yeah, after fought might a be, superpowered Urizen. Might be a little winded. And then getting kind of clapped by, <laughs> by Virgil. Virgil. Virgil's right. literally like, fighting you like this has no meaning. Heal your wounds. Get strong, Dante. Yeah, like I... Then we'll settle. That's my best. That's my it's, best. It's I not bad, do. but yeah, like... Oh, come on, it's bad. <laughs> Like, a, maybe a little winded. Dante. Maybe a little winded. Heal your wounds. Heal your wounds. Get strong. I don't know what that was. We'll settle the matter, Mr. Potter. <laughs> Going to Snape now. I've got nothing. Literally shows him just like, literally. That's like, yeah, boop, gone. You can't follow that. <laughs> Why is Dante so dumb? Why did they move DMC what? forward to after? How is he dumb in this game at all? The only the only way he's dumb in this game is emotionally dumb. In the way that he doesn't want to trust Nier with anything. He doesn't want to trust anyone else with this. He just wants to solve the problem on his own. In terms of in terms of being intelligent or smart, he's not really dumb. He's extremely competent. He's he's right to trust his own ability. He literally beats to Risen. He He has very, very similar trust issues to Virgil. Yes! And that's kind of the whole point, and that's why they need the th the outside element to stop the stop the end of the game becoming the the end events of three again. What's the what's this YouTuber's name? Uh, is it Dead Horse, perhaps? <laughs> because we are really beating it. I know, but it's fun. It is. It is. No, no. Once again, we have no problem with this guy. Once again, I, as I, I don't actually know who it is, I'm ba I'm basing this. The uh, critique solely on this one video. No, yeah. Well, the thing is, he's, he's really only... He's, he's made, like... There's a video before this, <clears> which <throat> is unrelated to the channel for the most part. It's some weird thing, I think. Uh, the the first Devil May Cry video, and then this video. Okay. So, not much on the channel. The only thing is that, like... They're well-edited videos, and there definitely seems to be a script behind them. It's, it's just a joke. All, Are we getting trolled right now? All... But, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. After DMC2... Last we saw Dante in DMC2, he was on a motorcycle. Why tease Dante's return on a motorcycle if it wasn't because he escaped the demon world? Did because motorcycles are weapon? fucking awesome. Motorcycles are cool, and also that's a different. Also, that's an entirely different motorcycle, but that's kind of besides the point. Also, there's also the whole fact of Dylan the Cry 2 sucks. So why are we talking about it? Dante only o owns one motorcycle. You can't have him on motorcycles. Plural. <laughs> the hell, man. Okay. I'm I mean, I mean yes, like that. I mean, yes. You tease the last time you saw him was on a motorcycle, and then you tease him on a motorcycle. There's a tentative connection there, but in terms of like an, an objective criticism, like, oh, how dare you do that? You're like, you're like, okay. So, do you remember my reactions to the Devil May Cry Five trailer? Vaguely, yes. Like, did you you know how like into it I was getting? Yeah, I was kind of like picking it apart. Yeah. At no point did I go, oh my god, that's Dante on a motorcycle. I just went, fucking awesome, he's back. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like, this is five. Great. Actually, the funny thing is, like, you, you would actually assume what, what is now the correct timeline, that Devil May Cry 2 took place before 4. Well, yeah, fuck it, because it's called 2. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, and it, it's not an explicit prequel. Yes. And it's, it's come, it came after 1. Like, <laughs> yeah, because, uh, like, um, I forget how that was confirmed, because before the timeline tentatively was confirmed to be 3, 1... Four two, for whatever reason. But then they changed it to be the two four five. It just doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't really. It because two is a side story. It doesn't really matter where it goes. No, it, it, it two is like it, it's meandering and pointless. It's and like saying no at what point in the Silent Hill timeline does Silent Hill two go? Yeah, two. Like it doesn't matter as long as it comes before three. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll play Silent Hill. <laughs> eventually. We should. We really should. All right, look, look, we're all, I can feel like we're almost there at the end of the, end of the intro. We're almost there. I okay, fine. Into the game and only realized that fans thought it was after DMC two after the fact, and then say, "Oops, actually, DMC four is after DMC two now because they forgot." 
If Dante, I don't think it's because they forgot. That was a, that was a that was a conscious decision just to move to Devil May Cry two out of the conversation so that it didn't impact the story the story writing. They just didn't want to deal with Devil May Cry two because it's a it's a badly written game that throws too many wrenches in the overall story of Devil May Cry. Yeah, I'm just so they so they're, they're just like fuck it, we're gonna retcon it and just move it out of the way. Yeah, like this is a, okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that Capcom forgot. <laughs> That was a constant decision of like, hey, Devil May Cry 2 kind of sucks, let's just kind of push it away, please. Capcom forgot. Trapped in the underworld all this time. What a stupid Why does he look so crappy? Why is fighting Dante Why always Dante about about now? Why is fighting Dante always Dante, 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 Dante Yay, it's the end of the intro! Oh, you're saying there are so many criticisms for this game oh, that I can't list them all. What was that like, what was there like two that we were like, oh, maybe, on that list? I don't even remember. <laughs> I'm sorry, like... <laughs> okay, look. A lot of my frustration really does come from a place of love. But along with my OCD desire for everything to make sense, what really makes DMC5 such an obsessive head-scratcher for me is discovering how little effort almost every aspect of this game seems to have had outside of the graphics and the fighting engine. For a game that I was hoping would, like, really knock my socks off and prove me wrong, the end result is kind of... insulting. We simply aren't operating on the level of mutual respect, I assume. No, I guess not. But of all things... That's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> that's like your opinion, guy. No, I think that's objectively wrong. That is objectively wrong. Yeah. So, like saying that every aspect of the game is poorly put together and poorly, like poorly put together, poorly conceptualized, poorly, poorly made, poorly or like and everything's poor except for the engine and the gameplay mechanics. Everything else sucks. He said low effort. Low effort. Actually, that's a good point. Not just bad. Low effort. Like they didn't like assuming they didn't care about any other element that they just haphazardly threw in every story element the setting the characters yeah this this video was a joke <laughs> well hey. <laughs> no this is like we might not do a part two of this because i genuinely think this is a troll job i don't think it is okay i'm sorry i'm done talking about this for now six minutes all right <laughs> Everything's changed. That's how it starts. The fever, the rage, the feeling of powerlessness. The turns, good men. Cruel. 